right, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everybody for attending today's webinar. This is the INC Dino Room Enclosure webinar by IAC Acoustics. My name is Andrew Pulte. I'm the NBH and Test Facility Sales Manager at IAC. And today we're going to talk about uh, dino room enclosures. Um, so typically dino rooms uh, at, at its base level, dinos are essentially enclosures that typically uh, provide ventilation. Uh, that's one of the more critical features uh, to make sure that all of the exhaust gases and fumes are ventilated properly, uh, especially if someone is, is inside the room during the test, for example. Uh, also protects from debris and hazardous fuels. Uh, I mentioned exhaust gases, but also if there were some components that failed or, or something happened, uh, there's a, a pretty heavy layer of material that can prevent um, a really serious uh, injury outside of the enclosure. And also it provides acoustic isolation. IAC acoustics uh, and really um, our bread and butter is uh, noise control enclosures. Uh, we've been doing this for over 70 years and we have a wide variety of products that, that offer noise reduction uh, up to 60 to 70 decibels or even more than that, depending on the uh, type of construction and design. We have dyno enclosures that fit any application. Uh, we control what we, uh, what we manufacture. Everything here on this diagram you can see we're, we're able to manufacturer in-house at our facility in the Chicago area. Uh, we make the doors, we make the panels, the windows, uh, we, we make the steel detail, and we have in-house powder coating capability to make any color you like. Uh, all of these features and, and pieces of the enclosure are, are manufactured in-house and can be installed by uh, someone with some installation experience, or we could provide the installation services as well. Um, so we can we can offer a full turnkey system. These enclosures have a really high level of sound transmission loss. As I mentioned, they can block sound up to uh, 50 to 60, even 70 decibels with the double wall enclosure systems. High level of sound absorption. So the noise that's generated inside the rooms um, is able to be absorbed by the, uh, the acoustic treatment inside the dyno room itself. Uh, we have the, even have the option to provide vibration isolation um, if there is a, a need for that. We can, we can include uh, floors and a vibration isolator rail system on the enclosure so that it's fully decoupled from the, the rest of the environment. Uh, everything is made to, made to fit. Uh, it's a very airtight seal. We use uh, insulation and, and special acoustic uh, sealing material in between all the uh, joining detail and, and panels and steel. Um, and this is a very modular design, so it's designed to be um, sized, any, any uh, shape and size that, that might be needed. Uh, typically, it's a rectangular construction, but there's actually uh, the ability, we have the ability to modify and, and do other types of designs as well. So I mentioned the ventilation system first. That, that really is uh, one of the most important things in a dyno room, is being able to properly size the ventilation. Um, and not just for exhaust gases, but also for heat. Uh, you can imagine a, a vehicle that's being tuned uh, to really high performance. You know, some of these engines go up to 2,000 horsepower for, for a full uh, vehicle, and uh, they generate a lot of heat. And these dyno rooms can be small, uh, so we need to be able to pull that heat out uh, very quickly and at a, at a high volume, as well as the exhaust gases. So IAC Acoustics provides a ventilation system that fits your specific application. There, there's really no one size fits all range. Um, you know, we can work with a, a little bit uh, of a requirement. Uh, if you just let us know what it is that you're testing, uh, you know, roughly what the horsepower, the maximum horsepower rating is, and, and we can do some calculations based on the size of the room and the amount of heat that we estimate is going to be generated to specify a vent system that's going to work uh, just for your for your project. We can have a single exhaust stack or multiple exhaust stacks as shown here in, in the photo with this, uh, this vehicle. Um, the exhaust is typically attached or, or it is typically attached to the, the walls of our enclosure. Uh, we can also have everything ceiling mounted and ducted with an exhaust plenum. Um, so we can have one exhaust system that uh, supplies the, the engine exhaust and then the uh, room ventilation fan 
can all come into the same exhaust plenum if, if just a single exhaust is required. And we can provide portable ventilation fans as well uh, to cool down the, uh, the front of the engine uh, or the front of the vehicle if it's a, a front mounted engine, for example. Um, we can also, we, we've done projects where we have rear mounted engines and, and set, you know, center mounted engines and vehicles that have two different ventilation fans on the sides. Uh, so there's a, there's a wide range of uh, ventilation systems available. All of the ducting and, and the acoustic silencers can be color matched to match the enclosure if that's what's required as well. We can also put some uh, steel flashing up to cover up the ducting if, if uh, aesthetics becomes a really important feature. And oftentimes it is. These typically tend to be show pieces for, for a lot of folks. You know, they really like to show off the capability of these uh, enclosures and uh, what it can do for performance and, and also for acoustics. Most of the time, these ventilation systems go right outside, and the uh, the ducting and the angles and, and the types of silencers that are used are all very, very important in being able to determine how much sound is reduced and, and the sound that doesn't get um, reduced by the silencers and the acoustic enclosure. Uh, we need to make sure that that gets directed properly. So on the photo on the right, you can actually see an application where the exhaust had two different plenums and uh, was exhausted outside. There's a brick building in the in the background that's actually a daycare center. And um, daycare center actually didn't have any idea that there was a dyno tuning uh, or test facility over here because we were able to quiet down that sound and uh, redirect it away from them so that they didn't even know it was here. And that's really important, uh, especially in residential areas or, or any other application that has some uh, people that are going to be outside nearby. So today I want to talk about three different types of dyno rooms. The first one is maybe the one that a lot of people think of first and foremost would be the, the vehicle chassis. So these are dyno enclosures that have uh, the ability to do full vehicle testing. Usually there's a chassis with rollers can be single roller or, or dual rollers uh, for four-wheel drive systems and testing. Um, most of the time these chassis rollers are uh, embedded in the floor so that way the user just drives into the enclosure and uh, sets it up right there on the wheels on the floor as you can see in, in both of these photos. And there's typically a, a pit inside of the uh, con there's a, a big concrete pit in, inside in the middle where all of the chassis dyno equipment is housed. And the enclosure itself is, is very, very flexible, as I mentioned. Um, the exhaust can be put wherever it needs to be uh, in here as long as it's close to the exhaust of the vehicle. Um, we also have some flexible hose that we can use if, if there's a, a variety of applications. If you have a dyno that has to be able to accommodate Forward and rearward engines, um, you know, we can provide a portable ventilation system that can be moved back and forth um, and have you know, two exhaust plenums on either side. And uh, that's that's an option. Um, but in enclosures itself, uh, we, we use a, a really heavy steel gauge um, wall system. You can see on this photo here, there's a lot of uh, shelving and, and other fixtures that are attached to this wall. And uh, oftentimes there's uh, connected or, or fastened to the joining detail in between. So uh, it's really rugged, really durable, and, and these enclosures will, will last for decades. Uh, the size is really important as well um, in, in determining the ventilation and the uh, amount of acoustic isolation you need. Also, how much space you need around here to do, do work inside. Um, and we have the ability to customize and, and design uh, the exact size for the, the length, the width, the height, um, the door size, window sizes, all of those things are very customizable. We do have a list of standard sizes available on our on our website and in, in our literature. However, as I mentioned before, we do make all of our panels, uh, our doors, our windows, uh, everything for the enclosure is made in-house, so we can design it to your specific uh, fit if you need to squeeze something into a, a room that already has three walls around it um, and you need it to be just the right size, we can, we can design it to be 
um, you know, within an inch of, of the uh, size that you need. Um, I did want to mention too on, on a couple of the uh, drawings here on the right side elevation, you can see most commonly uh, we, we have the inlet air that is pulled in from the, uh, the shop air. And then the exhaust fan, as I mentioned earlier, goes outside. Uh, and, and each one of these exhaust and inlets has a, an acoustic silencer to make sure that it uh, the, the noise that is produced in here doesn't escape either outside or, or into your shop either. The second type of dyno enclosure I wanted to talk about is for uh, engine and powertrain. Obviously, these are a little bit smaller than the full chassis dynos. Oftentimes, they include a control room. Um, you can see on the image on the left, the, uh, the left side has the control room. It's just a, a small booth with a, a large viewing window and uh, provided with our module lines and, and noise lock doors. And then on the other side, on the right side, is the actual test cell itself for the, the engine. Um, Oftentimes, there's portable carts that the uh, the end user will use to bring the engines in and out. However, we could also accommodate a ceiling mounted crane or, or a four post crane or, or a jib crane. There's, there's a lot of options for different types of hoists and cranes that can be used inside here as well. Um, we can incorporate that into the design of the dyno room. Uh, a, a large viewing window, that, that's really important. I'll get into windows in a little bit. Um, and then we can also provide electrical systems. Uh, in this photo on the right, you can see that there's a, an electrical outlet that's surface mounted. We also have the ability to um, integrate the electric outlets and light switches inside uh, the panels themselves. If you want a nice flush finish, uh, we can accommodate that without affecting any acoustic performance of the system. And again, the standard sizes for the engine dyno rooms, actually pretty, some, some of them uh, pretty similar. Uh, if you were testing multiple engines on one, in one room, uh, they can get pretty large, similar to the uh, chassis uh, vehicle dynos. Um, and then the enclosure drawings, very similar as well. The third thing I want to talk about is uh, motorcycles, ATVs, and trikes. Now, th these use a lot of the same features that you'd see in, a, in an engine or in powertrain room or, or a vehicle chassis room. Um, oftentimes, they're smaller, you know, about the size of engine dyno test enclosures. Uh, sometimes the uh, motorcycle dynos are actually on top of a concrete floor, and, and so you there's there's a step up or a ramp up to get the the uh, motorcycles in there. And what we can do in this case, you can see on the, the picture on the left, we have a uh, flooring system that uh, we can use. And, and that goes back to the, the vibration isolated floor system uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, so we can do one of two things, either provide the full enclosure with the vibration isolation and a flooring system, as well as the walls and ceiling, or just the, the walls and the ceiling and uh, set it on top of a already existing concrete um, floor, as, as you can see in the photo on the right. And actually the picture on the right, this is a motorcycle dyno, but it also has a, a third wheel in here for, uh, for trikes. Um, so you can do either or. And uh, we, we often work with other dyno manufacturers as well. Um, we're, we're pretty familiar with the, the dyno suppliers for, for engine chassis, motorcycles, um, engine and powertrain. Um, we we work oftentimes with those with those folks to provide a, a turnkey system. So if you're not looking for the headache of of trying to get contractors for the uh, the dyno and a separate contractor for the enclosure and another contractor for uh, you know ventilation, we we can handle all that as a full turnkey if if that's something that's uh, that's desired. And again, uh, similar. In, uh, to the engine dynos, the motorcycle dyno standard sizes here, uh, you can see. Uh, oftentimes, you, you'll see the, the dynos for motorcycles specifically will have this uh, L-shaped plate to them. So a lot of the uh, ch chassis uh, hardware is, is over here on this, this L fixture, and then the motorcycle is placed here along this center line and, and then tested. And uh, one thing else I wanted to mention here too, on, on the right side, this section through the vent system. Um, this is just one of the 
one of the many examples uh, of where we have an inlet plenum. And that inlet plenum is uh, connected to the, uh, the wall. We have the, an inlet grill. And then you can have an adjustable hose stand with some just some simple jack stands to attach the, the exhaust to. Uh, and then the exhaust grills in here as well. So all the exhaust from the from the bike and, and from the roof, the heat generated in the roof gets pulled up to this exhaust system and outside. Noise lock windows and doors. Um, so these all of these windows and doors go hand in hand with the enclosure. They are matched to mat, to meet the uh, acoustic requirements and also the, the color and the uh, um, ventilation performance requirements of the wall and, and ceiling system as well. Uh, so viewing windows are, are really important, especially if you have a control room in here. Um, you know, a lot of folks are, are using these as, uh, again, uh, showpieces if they want to show their customers around uh, during a test. You can actually watch watch their test on, from a safe distance uh, and a safe space on the outside and, and still see exactly what's going on. They are customizable. We can, uh, we can make these windows uh, any size that you need. Uh, they are also um, UL fire rated. So the, our dyno enclosures have the, uh, the option to have a UL rated enclosure and, and all of these UL ratings are, are um, generated up to uh, 90 minutes. Uh, so it'd be uh, for, the, for the enclosure and up to three hours for the doors. I did want to talk briefly about uh, different types of dyno applications. We, we often work with OEMs as well for very specialty applications. Most of the time, these are for vehicle suppliers or, or tier one, tier two vehicle suppliers that are doing component testing for, for engines, powertrains, uh, or, or smaller components. A lot of times, these are electric dynos, so they'll have a certain tone or frequency that can be loud and, and interfere with the acoustic measurements that you're trying to make when you're testing your product. Um, the, these are more commonly used for NVH and acoustic test facilities where you're measuring low noises and, and you need your test equipment to be quiet while you can uh, while you can measure the uh, the product that you're testing so this specific one this was a uh, vehicle test dyno you can see it's got all four wheel hubs in here with four separate uh, inc dyno fixture uh, enclosures and uh, each one has its own individual customized door uh, double swing doors that open and close when during the test um, they open for easy access to the wheel hub, and then they, they close up during the test to uh, make sure that the motors are quiet enough that they don't interfere with the, the noise that the product's making during a typical test. This is just another photo that shows a similar thing, but this is specifically for a motor test rig. Um, so this actually highlights a, a few different IAC acoustics features that we have. Uh, we've got the standard exhaust ventilation system. This was in an anechoic environment. So we have special uh, acoustic wedges on the walls and the ceiling and some special acoustic treatment on the floor to provide absorption uh, while the, the user does uh, these sensitive noise measurements all around the, uh, the engine. Gives them an idea of how the, uh, the engine is performing uh, not just for, for sound quality, but also for performance as well. If there's a certain type of uh, frequency that might stand out as being too loud than, than what's typical, you know, that could be a, an indication that there's some, some wear or, or something wrong with the, uh, the assembly of the engine itself. Um, in this particular application, you can see a combination of uh, wedges with perforated sheet steel and fiberglass. Uh, there's some fiberglass treatment on, on the floor and then a foam treatment around the doghouse where the, the engine dyno motor, the electric motor is. Oftentimes we run into, um, well, why can't I just build it myself with uh, you know, some drywall and, and two by four studs? And uh, it, it's definitely doable. And it, it, may, be, um, it may be something that, that you're able to do for your specific application. Um, INC dynos, have a lot of advantages as far as knowing what you're getting into. So we guarantee the acoustic performance of, of all of our products that, that we offer. 
Um, everything has a, a specific measurement data. Uh, we guarantee the ventilation performance. Uh, we, we provide a one-year warranty uh, on all of the, uh, uh, the materials and also installation if IAC Acoustics performs the installation of the facility as well. Um, cost is fixed. You, you know what, what, is, what it is up front. Um, there's no surprises. We, we, do, uh, we always recommend having a site visit of an IAC acoustics person to make sure that we know, understand where all the uh, ventilation is going to be, um, any uh, possible obstructions that may be there, uh, make sure we have plenty of space for materials and staging during the installation. Um, so there's no, there's no surprises. Um, oftentimes, we only need two people for the assembly as well. So if this is something that uh, you, know, you as the end user want to take on, to do the assembly yourself, it's it's easy enough. We would provide the uh, all the shop drawings needed to be able to do that. High acoustic performance, I mentioned already, we, we have the highest acoustic performance in the industry, uh, up to 60 to 70 decibels of reduction. Um, 40 dBA is our standard performance, but uh, obviously we offer much higher than that if that's what's needed. And then it's uh, very corrosion resistant. The, the materials provided are, are heavy duty. Uh, all of the joining detail is is all powder go coated um, at our factory. We have control over that to make sure that everything is uh, is covered and, and you don't have any potential corrosion issues. And uh, I mentioned the uh, acoustical entry doors and the windows. IAC Acoustics manufactures those things in house, uh, and we have control over the uh, the acoustic performance and, and the uh, manufacturing process. So. If something dr gets dropped or, or bent or damaged during installation, we, we have the ability to have a very quick turnaround to replace it um, if, if that's something that's needed as well. I appreciate everyone's time today. Um, feel free to send some questions or, or any messages in the chat if you have any questions right now. And uh, I would also encourage you to visit our website at iacacoustics.com. On the front page, you'll see a whole section just for dyno cells. And they have them broken, the, the sections are broken out very similar to what, uh, what I had shown today for motorcycle, uh, engine, and then full vehicle chassis dyno test cells. There's all kinds of good stuff there. A lot of pictures, some case studies, uh, acoustic performance data, all kinds of interesting things there for ventilation and, and um, if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly or uh, to call our call our main line. Uh, my contact information is here. And uh, again, I appreciate everyone's time. We'll, we'll wait a minute or two if there's any questions that pop up. Okay, someone asked, uh, what is the lead time on your enclosures? Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. We have, and once once the engineering drawings are approved by you, uh, we'll create, we'll generate the draw engineering drawings and send them over to you. Um, that typically takes two to three weeks for that process. Once they're approved, uh, after that, it's an eight to ten week lead time for us to order materials, ship, ship, and uh, build everything and, and ship it in components. And then, uh, depending on the size of the enclosure, it can be anywhere from you know three days up to a couple of weeks for the installation if if we're doing the installation. If we're doing installation, the, the time from the time the order is placed to the time it's installed uh, can be anywhere from roughly 14 to 16 weeks. I don't see any other questions, so I appreciate everyone's time again. Thank you very much, and have a great day.